everyone, it's the Dark Knight Admin, and we're back to talk about admin prep. We're gonna focus on sales and marketing. In this section, we're gonna talk about the sales process, opportunity path, forecasting. We're talking about dashboards, lead scoring, the homepage assistant. We're talking about leads, lead convert, lead assignment rules, campaign, and campaign members. We'll add some other things in there as well that are good in this section. First things first, to enable the Sales Cloud uh, Council user permission. You need to go to that user, enable those permissions for them. This grants them access to a lot of those sales things that they're going to need to do. So this is a permission set license that you need to assign to the user. The sales council user grants access to the sales council. The sales user used for campaign influence is a big one there. And then also that if you can use part art, you can gain access to those part art features and pilots as well. So the first thing we're talking about is business accounts and contacts. Accounts, these are the companies you work with. Contacts, these are people you work with at these companies. Pretty straightforward, that's a standard model. That's how Salesforce is set up with the business accounts and contacts model in mind initially. Then there's also this thing called a person account. It's an individual. Think of it as account contact mashup. Anywhere there's lookups to accounts or contacts, a person account will show providing that it meets that criteria. You do have to enable person accounts. You need to submit a case. Salesforce needs to turn them on. You do have to create a record type for that. Your artwork defaults for contacts needs to be controlled by parent. Uh, and also allow customer support to enable person accounts and the accounts in. So you have to turn all these things on in order to enable person accounts. There's a couple of things to know about person accounts. Once person accounts are turned on, they're on. You can't turn it off. I always try this out in a sandbox. All right, let's hop on over to the leads. So we're gonna talk about the lead object. So these are your future accounts and contacts. It allows you to vet your prospects. You can assign your lead to a user or queue. There's a lead score on there. So there's a lot of cool things we can do with leads. First thing that we can do is set up Einstein lead scoring. You do have to go to the assisted setup here, turn it on. Once it's on, you get something that looks a little like this. On the list of views, you can add in the score. And then also on the record, you can get something that looks a little bit something like this as well. So you can actually get the Einstein score on the lead. To so the higher the score, the better the lead is. You can be added to a list view. You can be added to a page layout. You do need to have a permission to do that. So there's a sales cloud Einstein user, user permission that you have to assign to them. So just go ahead and assign that and then you gain access to all those cool tools and functionality. So what exactly is Einstein lead scoring? It uses data and machine learning. It looks at the past leads for details for converting. So it looks at all your old data and it figures out, hey, if this criteria tends to be true, this is probably gonna be a good uh, lead for you based on past experience. The next thing we're gonna talk about here is lead mapping. By default, when you wanna take a lead and you wanna convert it, you can set up lead mapping fields that are already defined for you. This is just a small sample snippet of what this, uh, that's out there. When you do lead conversion, it takes a lead and it maps it to account, contact, or opportunity. So what we can do is if you create any custom fields on your lead, you can always map them to other fields, custom fields on your account, contact, and opportunity of the same data type. On the lead object and object manager, you can always go to your uh, map lead fields here, and then you'll get a page that looks a little bit like this, and you can take your lead fields, figure out what they are, and then you select a different tabs there to identify the object that you want to move to to assign. So right now we're assigning lead fields to account fields. If you want to do it for contact, you would select contact and opportunity and so forth. You can map the same field to multiple objects. So I can take my average here and map it to a field on account called average or that matches. Same thing with contact and opportunity. Next one here is lead assignment rules. So when a lead comes in, typically through like a web to lead. We can assign the lead to a queue or user. You can also, when you create leads in the system, you can automatically say use lead assignment rules. One thing to note is you can only have one active process per org. You can have multiple processes created, but you can only have one active process at a time. And as a little note, whenever you create your rule entries here for your lead assignment rules, put your most restrictive criteria at the top and your least restrictive criteria at the bottom. That way your, your catch all at the bottom doesn't catch everything right away. You wanna have very, systematic statements on the top here and then very broader ones towards the bottom. With web to lead allows you to create a lead in Salesforce with a web form. So this is a tool that we can generate a web form with. You have a limit of 500 per day of any all recruit that also includes web to case. If you go over that limit, you, there's going to be a 5,000 that can be put into the queue and that list will be emailed to the admin. So then the admin can then insert those leads at a later point in time. Lead auto response rules. This is basically, it will send an email out based on criteria on the lead. And this is typically done on the creation of a lead. A lot of times for your web, the lead forms, you want to auto respond to that person saying, hey, we got your lead. So if you want to do that, you can set up your lead all response rules, providing that you capture the email address. If you don't have the email address, you can't send an email. A couple of things to note on this is that when you set this up, you do have to specify the name and you do have to set up a organizational wide email address for this. So that's a, one of the caveats to this. You have to have that set up. And then you also have to have an email template select. Depending on your role, you can have different email addresses send things out and different templates put out for the different criteria that you that may be met. For get moving uh, on to the next topic, please like and subscribe.
I produce self service stuff every week. If you like this type of material, please like it and leave comments down below. That way I know to keep producing it. Next thing we're gonna talk about is opportunities. With opportunities, you, pre you create what's called a sales process and that's used in conjunction with record types. This allows you to select your different stages for your different processes. So you can have a record type with the same sales process tied to it. And this right here is what we call a sales process. We, we select the selected values that are, we want in there. And where are the values in here, in here are the ones that we're gonna use later on in our in our in our sales process this is how we set it up then we can uh, uh, when we create a record type we assign a sales process to it so a record type can only have one sales process but a sales process can have multiple record type when you create a stage just be mindful of that as well that you give it a name and you have to specify the type of either open close one or lost open means that the opportunity is open anywhere on along the pipeline there uh, close one means that you won close lost means you lost the deal the, both closed one and close lost are considered closed statuses so that is the is closed functionality if that's checked that means that it's in one of those two stages for each of the different stages you can, you can set your own probability the probability doesn't really drive too much other than you're saying hey that if it's in the new stage maybe it's 10 percent but if it's like initiating contracting stage maybe it's 75 percent for your probability the main thing that here we want to focus out is also the forecast category so there's admitted pipeline best case committed and closed closed means that it's done committed means that you're pretty sure this deal is going to be uh, closed best case means it's got a 50 50 shot Pipeline means that it's maybe, you know, 23% something there. And admitted means that if it's in this stage, the forecast category is admitted, it means that it doesn't count towards any forecasting stuff. So it's just uh, important things to remember when setting up stages, because those do have impacts on your forecasting if you use forecasting. So speaking of forecasting, you must enable forecasting. It can be based on opportunity or opportunity products. So when you set up forecast, you can reference it either one of those objects. It can be based on amount or quantity. So it can be based on the quantity of the opportunity products, or it can be based on amount on the opportunity. You can specify the date. You can also specify the hierarchy. Typically it uses the role hierarchy. And one thing to note, you can only create up to four forecasts. So you can always come back and adjust them. These aren't set in stone. You can see there's little pencils here telling me that I can change things if you want. Or you can also just delete old ones if you're not using them anymore to create new ones. So you do have to enable it. You can also, you have to enable adjustments. If you want to manage forecast rollups, you can enable that uh, if you want to change the Default date range, you can change those as well, and you also show quotas. If you, these are all things you have to enable or turn on once you have forecasting turned on. The next thing here is path. It used to be called sales path. Basically, it provides guidance for users based on a record type and a pick list field. So when you create a path, you have to specify the record type. Also, a pick list field on that object. You can only have one path per record type. You can specify the fields here that you want to show for each of the stages. So right now we're looking at the qualification stage and we have the different fields shown there. We also have our guidance for success. When you go to needs analysis, you can show different fields there and also provide different guidance for success for each of the different stages that's available. This is kind of just what it looks like in Lightning. Just remember this is only in Lightning. You can't do this in Classic. We have it in our, their expanded view. If you want to collapse it, you click that little arrow there and it will collapse that whole view for you. So this is just a quick kind of view of what it looks like in Lightning. There's also opportunity contact roles. So on every opportunity, we can send contact roles. And these are people that are typically helping with your opportunities, but you can also list people who may be a known detractor or not helping the deal out. You basically assign their role to the user. And one thing to note that contact roles, they do not have to be part of the, the account that's tied to the opportunity. They can be anyone in the system. You can also set up opportunity teams, and these are all internal users. So before that was all your contacts, opportunity teams. This is people within your org. And these are you know, users of Salesforce. This is your internal, user, your internal users. They're here to help you with the deal. You must turn this on. You can, can define the role and also their access as well. So depending on the different uh, users, you may provide edit access, read access to that particular record and also specify the role that they have. One thing to note, you can set the, your opportunity team up ad hoc when you set up your opportunity teams, which means you just select the team members you want. You can also select a team by default for your user. You see here, so on a user record, we can add team members. We can add our team members grant their access, specify their role. We can also be mindful of here, you can automatically add your default opportunity team members to any opportunities that you create or open opportunities that are transferred to you. So if you want an opportunity team always on all your opportunities, you can set this up here. That means that if that's checked, anytime you create an opportunity or one that gets assigned to you, these members are automatically added to the opportunity as well. So just some cool functionality that can help you along your way in your selling process. Products and price books. This is what's being sold. These are services, tangible items. When you use your price books, on all your opportunities and opportunity line items. In general, a price book is a collection of products and pricing. The price book is gonna be a 
list of all the different products that are in that price book with the price in there associated with them. Uh, price book entry is what that actually represents. So when you create a price book, you create a price book entry, which is going to signify that breakdown. So it's saying this product and this price belongs to this particular price book. One thing to know is products can be in more than one price book. So I can have multiple price books and the same product can be in multiple different price books via that price book entry, but it can only be there once with that currency. So if you have multiple currencies, you can't have the same product in the same price book with the same currency. If I have different currencies with my price book and I have two different products, I can have one for US dollars and one for pounds. That's perfectly acceptable because that's the same product, but two different currencies. Because when you set up a opportunity and you have currencies enabled, you have to specify the currency and then you have to specify the price book. If they're two match, it's gonna, it's just going to display the values that are actually matching there. So if my price book has all my price book entries in there from all the different currencies I have, it's only gonna show me the currencies that are relative to that opportunity that I'm on. Products and opportunities to set the price book at the opportunity level. You can only have one price book per opportunity. The products are, that are available are, are the ones that are in that price book. If multi-currency is enabled, both price book and currency must match. So if you have US dollars as your currency on your opportunity and you create, select a price book that doesn't have US dollar products in it, you're gonna have no products showing. Once products are added to an opportunity, the amount field can't be added. It basically sums the total of all the products. Some other little things to note, uh, underneath opportunity settings and setup, you can prompt users to add products to the opportunity. So you can provide a prompt for that. You can also say that uh, when users add a product to an opportunity and inserts a quantity to one array. So by default, you have to select, you know, you have to enter the value, but if you want to automatically have insert one, you can set that up like that. Next thing we're gonna talk about is quotes. You need to enable it if you want to use it. Quotes are tied to an opportunity. You can have many quotes tied to one op. So you can have one opportunity, you can have multiple quotes tied to it. You can sync one quote to the opportunity. So you can sync one quote and then you can go to a different quote that's related to that and sync that one. And when you sync it, certain fields on the quote and quote lines will sync to the opportunity opportunity product. This is a great way if you wanna have multiple options for a opportunity. So like maybe there's one configuration of products where they want XYZ and then they want ABC and then they want one, two, three. You can create a quote for all those different scenarios and then you can say which one's kind of the leading one. Then once that quote gets one, you can think that one up and it updates the opportunity and everything follows suit one other thing that's cool about the quote is this is the only object that has a built-in template so you can create quote templates uh, you can make many templates you can only reference fields that are on the quote account opportunity contact organization and user you can also add free text fields for free text and you can also insert images in those free text fields as well next thing is contracts it has to be linked to an account and can also be linked to an opportunity it states the terms of the deal so if you want to have those set contract prices for future orders you can just create a contract for that and there is active statuses on there so the next thing we want to talk about here is campaigns campaigns are a great tool they're used to track marketing initiatives so any advertisements solicitations emails events cold calling any of those things campaigns are great for the purpose of campaigns is to see how effective your effort was in that initiative so you can track your cost you can link your opportunities to campaigns uh, you can also target your audience or your prospects with which are leads contacts and person accounts just kind of a visualization here with campaign hierarchy so with campaign hierarchy it allows you to link campaigns together so you can have like a master campaign then have little mini campaigns within there allows you to see the overall success of all your campaigns and all the values roll up. So my values for my right here they all roll up from these down below so if i have my product launch here all the values from email demo event and video overview are in here and then all the values from this roll up to here and this up to here so this particular campaign has all the values from these two this one right here would only have the values from these two so all the values roll up so you can get a high level view of how successful the complete campaign was but then you also get to kind of focus on the other ones so maybe when you did this the email campaign was really great but the video overview was kind of uh blah so you maybe you want to rethink about doing that in the future maybe that was really costly but you're not so much as a return on investment on that just a quick recap all the objects that relate to campaigns there's campaigns campaign members and opportunities because campaigns can reference it themselves that's why the campaign's in there every campaign you typically want to have campaign members for those are people that are part of that campaign and then when you can create opportunities from that as well campaign influence to get campaign influence to show an opportunity you need to turn it on so this is another feature that if you want you have to turn it on you need to sign them the crm user or sales user permission license set so on campaign you can relate a list of opportunities that have been tied to this campaign so on the campaign you can see all the different opportunities that have been tied to that particular campaign and then of course every campaign needs campaign members so this looks up to the campaign and it's tied to the lead contact or a person account a campaign member can only be tied to one of them but at a particular 
campaign can be made up of many campaign members that can be both campaign member that are, that are tied to leads to contacts and a person count so this has to be a person or individual or some type of contact that is within the system you can also manage the campaign members you can see all the campaign members in there you can uh, modify them you can import leads and contacts you can also send a list email out of here so you can do some cool things with the campaign member you need some visual help for sale so a lot of times you have all these cool things going on. They're like, well, I need, wanted some help. Reports and dashboards are a great tool for that. You can always get some sample reports from the App Exchange and then customize them to your fit your needs. So you can always go in there, pull down the pre-configured sales cloud dashboards, look at all the, the dashboards and the reports and configure them for your needs for your organization. And then there's the homepage assistant. So on your homepage, there's a sit there and it'll help you with leads that are assigned, opportunities overdue tasks, ops with no activity in the last three to 30 days, Ops with no open, open activity, uh, overdue opportunities, and it can show up to 10 updates that are shown at time. So it can show you a 10 up in here at a time. Please post any comments that you have below. And thanks for coming. And if you like this content, let me know.